Hi dear students, now as a continuation of my previous video class, now today I am going to start again with that uh, topic that is exploring the forces where I was just giving you an example that is where if two forces are going to act in the same direction they are going to add up like in this case where the two boys are trying to push the box together the forces are going to add up and then in the second picture you can see that the two boys are trying to push the box in the opposite direction so the resultant force would be the difference between the two forces now we can also give our sight in another example that is the tug of war which is again a team game where you can see here there are a group of girls standing in one one side and the group of boys on the other side with a rope between them and suppose if both the teams are going to exert equal forces what do you think is going to happen yes the rope is not going to move at all now in this case a team which is going to put larger force or which is going to exert larger force is the one which is going to win because the rope is going to move in their direction okay so this is one example i just wanted to tell you now as a continuation we are going to move over to the next topic that is force can change this state of motion of an object that means whenever a force acts on the body it can cause two effects that is one it can change the speed of the object and second it can change the direction of motion of the object right so let us now uh, just i'm going to demonstrate this through an activity i've got a lemon here i'm just going to roll it on this you will see that it after traveling a certain distance it is going to come to a stop if I want to move it further, I have to apply a force in the same direction. Then you will find that it is again going to stop. If I want to make it move or increase its speed, I have to apply a force. Right. Now, if this is going to roll, this lemma, and if I'm going to stop it, what you are going to see is that the lemon is going to stop because its speed is going to decrease. So you can see that whenever a force is applied on the object, there is going to be a change in the speed of the object. If you are going to apply the force in the same direction as the motion of the object, what is going to happen? The speed is going to increase. If you are going to apply a force in the direction opposite to the direction of motion of the object, what is going to happen is that its speed will decrease. Okay. Now again, now we're coming back to the picture which is given. You are going to see this a common uh, game that the, usually the boys play is that they usually take a bicycle tube tire and then they roll it on the ground and they keep running with a stick and when a, what are they going to do with the stick they are going to just apply a force on this the tube uh, the bicycle uh, the tire so that when they are going to apply a force in the same direction as its motion you see that the speed of this tire is going to increase so it's a very common uh, uh, game the uh, students usually play now coming to an activity that is 11.4 where again it is demonstrated that there is going to be a change in the direction of motion when the force is going to act on a body so let us see this i'm going to just keep a ruler here and i'm going to roll the lemon again you see that on hitting this ruler the direction of motion of the lemon is going to change so this is exactly uh, what happens in the game of cricket as well so you see that the bowler is going to bowl at the batsman and what does the batsman do he is just going to change the direction by hitting the ball anywhere that is to the boundary right so we can see that to produce a change in the motion of the object state of motion of the object there are two things which are going to happen one there is going to be a change in the speed of the object secondly there is going to be a change in the direction of motion of the object then we can say that the force is causing a change in the state of motion of the object now i can conclude uh, with a reference to whatever is written in your book that is 
the force may bring about a change in the state of motion of the object why they are using the word may force generally we say can bring about a change in the state of motion of the object why is the usage of the term may this is because suppose i am going to apply a force and i try to move this book the book may move and instead of a book if i am going to place a huge rock i apply the same force will i be able to move the rock no so the force that we are going to apply may or may not produce a change in the state of motion of the object that is why there is a usage of the term may here right now so the first uh, thing that we have seen is that the force may change the state of motion of the object now there is another possibility of the another effect of force that is the force can change the shape of an object right so there is again one table 11.2 is given which is to be filled by us right so the first it says there is going to be a lump of dough on the plate and the force is applied on this dough with the hands what do you think is going to happen there is going to be a change in the shape of the dough so the force that we are going to apply with our hands on the dough is going to bring about change in the shape of the dough then secondly you can see that there is a spring which is going to be fixed to the seat of a bicycle if you are going to sit on it you are going to apply a force then what is going to happen there is going to be a change in the shape of that spring right so what you are going to write is that the last two columns are there where you have to write yes or no so the first one stands for change in the state of motion there is no going to be any change in the state of motion what is going to be there it is there is going to be only a change in the shape of the object then coming to the third one a rubber band which you are going to hang it from the wall by using a hook and then what you are going to do is that you may attach a weight to the end of this rubber band or you just simply pull it downwards what is going to happen you can see that the rubber band is going to get stretched that is going to be a change in the shape there is no going to be any change in the state of motion and at the last you can see that there is a metallic ruler which is going to be uh, balanced between the two blocks and you are going to place a weight exactly in the middle what is going to happen there is going to be a bend there is going to be a change in the shape of this metallic scale so in all these cases there is no change in the state of motion of the object so you will tick no for all and then there is a change in the shape in every situation so under the heading s yes, that is change in the shape yes you have to put a tick so this is how you are going to fill this table that is table 11.2 now all these things which i have explained to you can be briefly summarized like this that is the possible effects of force the first one is that the force may make an object which is at rest to start moving secondly force may change the speed of the object if it is moving thirdly the force can change the direction of motion of the object and lastly the force can change the shape of an object and sometimes force may cause some or all of these effects so it is not necessarily that the force can uh, produce only one effect there can be a combination of one or more effects in some of the cases right now classification of forces that is how we are going to classify the force that is basically we can classify the forces into two that is contact force and secondly non contact force as the name suggest what is a contact force so contact force is that force which is going to be applied when a body is in contact with the another body like when you are going to apply a force in contact with another body that force you are going to apply is called a contact force so let us take one example of this uh, contact force that is the muscular force the force exerted by the muscles is called a muscular force so it is a very obvious um, thing that you notice that without the help of muscles we cannot perform any even the simplest of the activity even by lifting a finger requires the use of muscles and let alone all other activities that we do like walking running uh, uh, even eating etc now 
is this muscles play a role only you what you are going to see is something which is outside our body but there are certain muscles which are inside our body they are doing their work as well for example the food that we are going to eat it is going to be digested how the food is going to be pushed into the alimentary canal by the action of muscles then when you are going to breathe in and breathe out what is going to happen the lungs are going to expand and contract again by the action of muscles and then the beating of heart is again that by action of cardiac muscles okay so it is not only the human beings which are going to make use of the muscles for uh, carrying out their day to day activities even the animals make use of the muscular force so basically muscular force is the force exerted by the muscles of our body now coming to the second type of contact force that is the frictional force so uh, the activity which i have demonstrated to you previously i rolled a lemon on the table after some time you found that the lemon came to rest so i have not applied any force it has come to rest on its own which means that there must be some invisible force which is acting in the direction opposite to the motion of the lemon and because of that the lemon has come to rest so what is that opposing force that opposing force is called as force of friction so friction therefore can be defined as an opposing force that comes into play when one body tries to move or actually move over the surface of another body and what is the direction in which the force of friction is going to act it is going to be in the direction opposite to the direction of motion of the body so uh, another common example where the friction comes into play is that whenever the engine of a car is switched off you will see that the car is going to come to rest uh, this is because of again the force of friction now so this is what that i thought i would be doing in this class so now again coming to the summary of what i taught today so let us see one by one the first one force may make an object at rest to move that is the first second one it may change the speed of an object if it is moving thirdly it may change the direction of motion of the object fourth it may bring about a change in the shape of the object and fifth force may cause some or all of this effects then the forces can be broadly classified into two types contact and non contact forces so contact force is a force acting on a body in contact with it example muscular force and the force of friction so what is a muscular force the muscular force is a force exerted by the muscles and what is force of friction friction is an opposing force that acts in the direction opposite to the motion of an object so that's all for today and uh, what i would ask you to do is complete that table that is 11.2 and please as i have told you before write down the summary of whatever i have taught you today in your class for copy so until i meet you in the next class bye bye